Welcome everyone. Welcome to another episode of Equip and Elevate. Today we've got the one and only level. Last time we had a really amazing conversation about Adulting 101 and I think a lot of you guys were wanting more of that conversation. I remember after we left we were so like I don't know, I just felt like we're very vulnerable. And like for me, as someone who's journeying of vulnerable, and I, that was a piece of my heart and just mm-hmm. sharing a bit of the things that I've learned along my 20s. I am still my 20s. But what we wanted to do, we wanted to do something very similar, conversation between two girlfriends. I think we talk like almost every day for like an hour. And I think there's some of the themes that we have similar themes in our lives that we've gone through or are going through. And I thought, why not bring that conversation to this platform? And I'm sure that a lot of you guys, when you're navigating your 20s, you know, there's a lot of things that you might be trying to figure out, like, how do I deal with self-forgiveness? How do mm. I deal with letting go or healing? So today we're going to really be touching on those kinds of themes. And we want you guys to be a part of the conversation. So please make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow the channel, and and also make sure that you comment and let us know what are some of your experience when dealing with self-forgiveness, healing, and letting go. So welcome, friend. Thank you for having me once again. <laughs> I'm so I love excited. it. I feel like you should be a regular. You should be like a regular guest. I don't know how, which show has a regular guest? I don't know, but I don't know. Uh, you should be like Dr. Phil on Oprah. Yeah. Can I? When, 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 oh, Dr. Oz and Oprah. Yes. Yes. A yes. regular. Because, yes. like, I'm telling you, last time when we had that episode, everyone loved the episode. It was amazing, though. I think I watched it and I was like, we were pretty deep, huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> afterwards, I was just like, did we just go yeah. into that? Even your yeah. husband shared it with me. Yes. He's like, one of my friends just watched this. Yeah. And it's, it was really encouraging yeah. just to get men. Men watch that and then learn something That's so true. obviously i knew that i had to bring you back i'm super excited to be here again you we, know i always love conversating with you it's like my I favorite <laughs> i can't go through a day without a phone call my <laughs> sisters would be like ha there she goes again i think ululi well usually what he does is like when i call hangs up hangs up he's like <laughs> <laughs> and he's like I, auntie Aya is calling <laughs> again <laughs> on the watch youtube <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so i'm really excited um and it's just such a good I, I don't know i think for me it's still parts of my life that i'm going through yeah so i don't have answers you yeah. know i really wanted this to be like a oprah moment yeah or like a um red table moment yeah where it's or like, gail and oprah yeah an like an honest conversation an honest conversation yeah. but i think part of it there's not always answers yeah. it's about sharing our journey and True. that's part of why we have just created this kind of space yeah so i think i'm gonna start with icebreaker so this is quite different Let's do it Bef- quite different from what we've done in the season yeah so this icebreaker really is to get you to relax okay um and it's really short answers one word answers with maybe a very short explanation okay. um so the first one is if you could travel back in time which era would you go back to and why Sure, if I could travel back in time, I would probably go back to my teenagers. Really? Yeah, I would go back there. Why? <laughs> and not stop being afraid. Sure. I okay. was, I was like, I, I think I said this the last time, I was pretty afraid of a lot of things. And, and I can't imagine that. No, I was. Because you're so bold and you do things and you're not scared and you're like, I look at you and I'm just like, oh no. In my teenagers, being sad, I was afraid of so many things. So I think going back there now, knowing that it's okay to 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 not win, it's yeah. okay to fail, it's okay. Okay. And then, if you could have dinner with one historical figure, who would you have dinner with? Oh my! Dead or alive? Dead or uh, Maya Angelou? Maya Angelou. Why? She was a lover of love. Oh, and you're a lover of love. I am a big. I lover think everything. Of love. If you guys don't know level, by the way. Um, everything she does is her ministry is around love. Love, love. <laughs> you know, so I, that makes so much sense. Yeah, the last yeah. one, what's the best way to unwind after a very stressful or long day? A glass of wine. I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. <laughs> a glass of wine. I knew you were going to say that. I, wanna say, I, wanna, I should have said, what's the best way to unwind without wine? Oh, 
um, phone off time with my son. Okay. I love that. Me too. Sometimes Childlike. having a phone there is like, you can have so much anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. so putting my phone in the bedroom yep. and just really not touching yeah. my phone. And I think sometimes people might see, I will send messages at like yeah. half nine. It's because I've left. Friends, you're always working. That's true. That's true. I should ask you that question as well. <laughs> What's the best way to unwind? Do you ever unwind? Um, sure. It always feels like I'm wasting time. Sure. Uh, when I'm unwind, like I feel like I should be doing something. Yeah. So even if when I am, I am relaxing, I have my laptop in front of me. I'd rather ideate, come up with ideas mm. for the podcast, plan something, look at things that we maybe even if it's not work related, yeah. Yeah. like look at things we need for the house. Yeah. So I sometimes feel like I am wasting time because mm. sitting there like the whole day. I hear you. So, but I am slowing down, guys. The well, baby. <laughs> you have to. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm learning to say no. I'm learning to slow down. I'm learning to put me first and baby first yeah. before anything else. Yeah, very important. Um, still not hasn't been easy, but I'm learning. Oh, but trust me, when baby's here, you are going to put yourself first <laughs> and put baby first. Yeah, it just happens naturally. Yeah, and I'm excited for that change. I'm excited too. I'm gonna be an aunt, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, God has been so good. I'm excited. How are you feeling? Um, sure, just filled with so much joy. Yeah. Um, excitement. Yeah. And I think God has been so just so faithful. Yeah. Um, every time when I think about like baby coming, I become so emotional. Yeah. I'm just yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm not gonna cry. Yeah. Um, but we cannot meet. Cannot wait to meet our baby. Sure. Um, I think it's just such a perfect blessing. I mean, uh, we, I know as your friend and your friends were super excited to meet baby. And I always say this, and I always want you to always remember this, that he's an orchestrator of what's happening in your body. Yeah. You, your gynae can only go so far. Your doula, your midwife can only go so far. But at the end of the day, only God understands what's happening in your body and what is going to come out of it is just going to be even so, more perfect yeah. than what he's already started orchestrating. So enjoy it. And I, I'm just, I'm happy that you're taking, you're taking me along this journey with you. And yeah. I'm there for a phone call like, friend, is this know. happening I'm right so, now? I'm also very paranoid. You are. She's the most paranoid oh mommy to be ever. Oh my goodness. But who's not? Who's yeah. not at the end of the day? Who's not first pregnancy? Everyone's I'm just paranoid. like when 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 baby has lazy days. I'm just like, oh my goodness, are you okay? Are you okay? When there was a point where you called me and you're like, friend, did your tummy stop growing? <laughs> friend, baby's fine. I know. Baby's I know. okay. Trust me. But it's it's part of the journey. Yeah. It's part of the journey, and I'm just grateful that you're taking me along. Oh, right. friend, thank you for coming along and answering my really crazy Always. things. Always. I know I ask you weird things all the time. Always. Who's going to answer the phone if I don't? <laughs> That's true. That's true. So just to get into today, um, and I think it really goes back to what you actually said earlier on about your younger self. Yeah. But maybe let me ask you this question. Today's theme is around self-forgiveness, mm. um, healing and letting go. Mm. What does self-forgiveness mean to you? Sure. Self-forgiveness. It's accepting what I went through mm. or what I've been going through. I could be present. It could be past. Um, but I need to accept that it happened in my life. And after the acceptance of it, then finding, my, finding the lesson in what happened. Mm. And what did, it, what did it mold? What did it bring out? And I think forgiving yourself, realizing there was a reason and this is the reason, then it becomes very easier to forgive yourself. Because mm. then you're like, oh, okay, I went through this to strengthen this part of my life. So it wasn't all null and void. Mm. And then, oh, I could have reacted better there. Oh, I could have dealt with this better. But I didn't, and it happened, and it's okay. But I've learned not to react like that. 
Mm. I've learned not to do like that anymore. And therefore, it has created a much better human being. So then it becomes easy to say, I forgive you. Because if you did not do those things, you wouldn't have known now. Mm. So self-awareness mm. in whatever may be present, may be past, self-awareness in why you went through that and accepting that you went through it and you did it or somebody did it to you or whatever the case may be, but just accepting that this happened and, hey, this was the lesson learned and it had to happen for you to become the label you are now. Mm. And I think in that it was, it's easier and has been easier for me personally to forgive myself for many a situations mm. that I felt like I could have dealt with better. To say, okay, now I know the mistakes I made as a friend then or the mistakes I made as a, as a sibling or a daughter, you know, as a wife. Now I know now to do better. Mm. And it's easier to say, I forgive you, Libs. And what was that moment where you had to exercise that moment of self-forgiveness? Sure. So I think when I had to exercise that was when I had Ululibo, when I had my son and had my baby. And it was a very tough time for me. Um, I, was, I just had a baby. I was very fragile, emotional, and um, I felt very unseen and misunderstood at the time. Mm. I mean, I'm a new mother and I'm not, I don't know what I'm doing yeah. at this point. And um, I'm not the best of wives at that time. Um, I'm not the best of friends. I'm not the best of anything, but I need to be present somehow. And I wasn't. And I had to fight certain battles. You know, I had to fight certain things. And when I look back, I was like, okay, um, as much as I was going through postpartum depression, my husband was as well. Hmm. And I was very strong on what I wanted, which till this day, I still say kudos to me for being strong for some of the decisions I made mm. as a mother, as a new mother. But I could have been more gentle mm. towards him. Mm. I could have, I could have heard him out maybe just a bit more than I, I gave the chance to. Because then I realized, oh my gosh, you were too harsh. Oh, you you just did not care, you know? Um, so you were just, I was just belting, belting whatever I felt, belting. And, and it took us a while to heal and get back um, our old original selves, lovey-dovey, oh, here's the cool clan, here are the Michelin mm. Cools. It took a while. I mean, we didn't shoot anything for a while because I was just trying to figure out, is, is, this, is this it? Mm. Like, are you not understanding how I feel? But then I was, I became a really, really harsh human being at that point. Mm. Um, I had to then, when once we had sat down with him, my husband, and now speaking about what went down and what happened, and we had that honest conversation that this is where I was, this is where you were, I had to then take myself to say, okay, I could have dealt better, but now I know that if I get pregnant again, mm. This is how I will deal with the situation. Better mm. off. Not that I'm not taking away everything. Some choices were great, but some maybe too over exaggerated, mm. too much, too harsh. And from my language to my 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 mannerisms, I could have done maybe just a tad bit better. And now I know and I've forgiven myself mm. for treating him that way. I felt like a bad wife. I felt like a bad wife. I felt like I was not present, but I just had a child, mm. you know, and that was my, 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 not my, what can you say? Reconciliation with myself that I just had a child. He needs to understand and all mm. of that. And, um, but he just had a child. Yeah. It's no more providing for just two people. Now it's three, mm. you know? So the pressure has mounted on his end mm. as well. You know, he also needs to be seen somewhere, somehow. It's new. Some of these things that are being, we are being told to do are also, as much as they are new to me, they're new to him. Yeah. And he's just wanting peace, you know. Um, so I had to, I, I, I had to then come back to say, Lebel, it's, you did it and you weren't a bad wife. And it's okay. Um, forgive yourself and move forward. Where can we move forward with this now?
going forward in our marriage. Sure. I love that. I think just listening to you, and I think this is something that maybe as women we struggle with, having to forgive ourselves. Oh, yes. And I think that's why this is one of the key topics I've sort of put down or themes. Um, Mm. I think that's my season where I'm actually getting to a point of, really getting to a point of self-forgiveness. Sure. And saying, what does it mean to me? What does it look like for me? You know, and I think the first thing is it's a transformation act of compassion and acceptance of my past mistakes and my shortfalls and being okay with that and saying I forgive you for that yeah you know and I think sometimes I'm someone who can sit there for a week and every time I think of a moment I'm angry with myself yeah I'm so angry with myself I'm like I could have done this I could have done this Mm. I could have done this Mm better or maybe change the situation but then I forget that I need to have compassion for myself and accept that I cannot do anything yeah and I need to get rid of that guilt yeah not even that guilt maybe the disappointment that I had for myself and and accept that that's happened and then exercising that compassion Mm. to say that I need to treat myself with that and I think maybe I want to look at your journey how has compassion played a role and self-forgiveness oh it's played a big role mm. it's played a big role because if i'm not kind with myself if i'm not gentle with myself i can't be gentle and compassionate with anybody else mm. i won't be it with my friends i won't be it with my husband i won't be it with my child so i've had to be very absolutely compassionate with myself and give myself the space to make mistakes Mm. and understand that they do happen and that you're not perfect and so compassion then has to play a big role in the forgiveness stage that okay you made this but what did you also do that was good in the situation sure so highlighting the good and the bad. Yes. Now, or even in the situation. Yes. Now let's magnify. We've figured out the negative part of things. But now let's magnify the great you did. Mm. What's the good you did in the situation? I was a present mother. I was a present wife. Mm. As much as maybe emotionally I was not there all the time. But I was present. I would ask, are you okay? Are you good? You know, um, I was a present sibling to a point where the one day I just like, you know what, my mom's like, let me look after the child, go spend time with your, your siblings. I did that. Um, uh, I fought for what I felt was right for my child at the time. Mm. What I felt was right for my marriage at the time. Mm. I fought for that as hard as it was and painful as it was. I fought for it. And that's good. Mm. That's good because I didn't quit and I didn't give up and say, you know what, everybody do what you want to do. I'm just over it. No, mm. I stood for what I believed in. Mm. I stood what for what my family values and what we want to cultivate in this new journey of us being three uh, was something we, we spoke about before having our son. Now we have him. Now maybe we've got a bit of humps and detours there but i am not moving for the from the alignment i'm not moving from the position that we both set for our family mm. and i fought for that and still stands now so i had to be i had to be compassionate and say you did good mm. there is good in in the negative parts of the situation yes you are harsh but you were also very strong so sure. Sure, I love that. And I think one thing you had said for me, what has been sort of that compassion through my self forgive through self forgiveness, I think it's being kind to myself. Yes. And having grace for myself. Yes. I think sometimes it's so easy to have that for everyone else, but not for myself. So have you found yourself in that situation? All the time. All the time. That's why I'm in my in the space of like the same way I'd exercise the same compassion mm. or the same grace and love for someone when they've done something wrong. Mm. I need to do that for myself and not see myself as an exception to the rule. Sure. Because generally I am the exception to the rule. Generally um, I am the person that I can't forgive. I am the person where I just struggle to reach a point of acceptance or a point that I can disappoint myself. Sure. 
and that I'm not perfect yeah. and that I am allowed to make mistakes and all these different things because for me, it almost feels like everyone else can make them. Mm. When I make them, I am harsh with myself. Mm. And I just, as I said, that I'll sit there and reflect on things. I mean, I'll make an example. Recently, we had this really am- amazing and exciting opportunity to speak and do a podcast. And I think there were so many things that didn't go according to plan. Yeah. And I remember breaking down when I got home mm-hmm. that, you know, Yo, Ayanda, you could have done this and this yeah. and this. Why do you put yourself in this situation? Why do you, na, 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 na. I just kept playing everything. And it was really difficult for the next couple of days because yeah. I was in this hole of if I had maybe said no to one, two, three, yeah. if I had maybe not met up with this person, why do I want to please everyone and meet yeah. up with this person? I could have had time to sort out this one thing. Mm-hmm. Or if maybe if I had delegated more to mm-hmm. the team, I would have not had to worry about, you know, other things. Mm. And so I I was in this bubble of, yeah. of, and I forgot everything else that was said that was great about that day. And I think for me, what you said before, what you said earlier on that, getting to a point of acknowledging the good, even in that situation. Yeah. But I'm, I think what <sighs> I've been doing also differently, I'm, I'm learning to surrender, hey? Which is the hardest part. It's hard, but it's so freeing. And I always say, we know this, hey, they preach that. They say it all the time. But it's not easy. But I think as someone, I think my husband always says that I want to be in control yeah. of every situation. Yeah. When that situation doesn't happen like mm-hmm. that, that's when I'm like, you are this person. Yeah. You should have, you are not, Yeah. you are new this, you know, mm-hmm. and just being ugly to myself. And I think that's one thing that I'm really learning in forgiving myself and playing sure. that compassion. Um, and yeah, and just being graceful and kinder to myself. Sure, and that's I've, deep. And, and, and also forgiving myself <laughs> for not having the grace. Someone once said to me, if you could, and I'm going to ask you this question, forgive yourself for one thing, what would it be? Then I said it. And afterwards, this person said, you must forgive yourself for not having the grace and the compassion and love. Hey now. Even in that situation. Hey now. So it's like another layer to say, I would forgive myself for this. And then, and then the person was like, well, you must also have grace that you, you, you know. and, and I thought for myself, like I always end there, like I'd forgive myself for yeah, being yeah. so critical of myself. Yeah. Then I end there. And then this person was like, also, you must also have grace for yourself for being for not forgiving yourself yeah. for being critical. Sure. And I think that's also another layer. If there's one thing you would forgive yourself for, what would it be? Sure. Feeling unworthy. So I I slip into that hole many a times and I've spoken to you about it where I, I when something happens that shakes me or shakes my marriage especially being, I could say, in the manage, marriage ministry, relationship ministry. And I feel very shaken mm. in that department. I know. I feel very unworthy to be speaking about marriage. Mm. I feel very unworthy to be speaking about relationships. I feel very unworthy to advise a friend and say, friend, do A, B, and C, and D. But then I've then also come to learn that as much as I, I advise and I give and I, I heal somewhere, I also need the healing. Sure. And I need to, going back to what you're saying, I need to surrender the fact that I am also human. Mm. I'm also in a marriage. I'm also in a relationship. Mm. And it will have its ups and downs. But where am I going for the healing? Mm. Where am I going for, 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 for any sort of uh, refill, mm. you know, in this very specific cap so i don't feel unworthy so i felt i felt very unworthy so many times but then i've come to surrender that i am human and this is my problem and this is what i'm going through 
and I need to just go somewhere, refill my cup, vent, go to therapy, talk to a good friend of mine and say, this is what's going on in my life. But it does not take the gift away from me. It doesn't take away the ministry from mm. me. And I've had to now, even now, it's something I'm still at constant work with. That mm. I am still very worthy. So I have to always forgive myself when I land up in a position where I feel unworthy. Because sure. to God, in God's eyes, I am always going to be worthy of what he's gifted me and what he's given me. Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Remember, the episode does not end here. So make sure you go on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and also Google Podcasts to check out the full episode and be inspired, learn so much more and learn more from our guests today. I hope you stay equipped and elevated. Love from Ayanda.